Hello, everybody, and it's, it's your back with Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor. I'm so glad for you guys to come and listen to our podcast, and we really are grateful for our wonderful following. Today, I have an amazing guest that I think you're going to find very interested. His name is John Borak, and he is a certified college advisor and college specialist. And he really, you know, he he looks at it like this. People are scared off by the sticker price of college, just like purchasing the uh, car. The sticker price should be a uh, deterrent to these selecting a college. You can always work around it. There's ways to save money. And he's going to show you different ways and, and opportunities that you probably didn't even know exist. So if you have kids that are in high school getting ready to go to college or you have kids in college, a lot of this information is going to pertain to you and you're going to find it very interesting because right now in, in our country, the price to go to college is so expensive and the living expenses, the tuitions, everything all together, you know, it's a, it's a hard struggle for both the parents and for the student. So listen up and John has some great information for you. I'm really, an, it's an honor, John, to have you on the show. No. I, you know, I think this is great what you're doing. Tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what you do. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Stacey, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's a really great uh, podcast that's, that you got going on with so many listeners. Um, to, so to give you a little bit of information about myself, uh, I uh, grew up in Texas. I uh, went to Texas Tech University, where I uh, co-majored in journalism and history. Uh, and from there, I had a 25-year uh, broadcasting, sports broadcasting career uh, that took me to some just great places across the country from Missouri to Nashville, Tennessee to Detroit. And then I finally landed here in the Philadelphia area. Uh, so um, what happened was, is after 25 years and when COVID came down, I think what happened, and a lot of people can probably attest to this, is that uh, when COVID came, a lot of people either lost jobs in, in our industry. Uh, when sports went away, so did some sports jobs. And at that time, I decided I, need, I wanted to pivot to something else. And it took me a little bit. Uh, took me a little while to figure out what exactly it was. What's that next passion of life? And it's not something you just snap your fingers. Sometimes people know what they want to do. For me, it really took a while, but I knew that I wanted to do something sales-based because I like connecting with people and I like uh, trying to, to, to play on their, uh, their buying senses and, and, and see what it was, as long as I believed in what it was that I was selling. So during that time, uh, my kids were transitioning between middle school and high school, and, and I was starting to learn about the college process, the, the financial aid process, the enrollment, the admissions, everything that pertained, because it seemed like a very complex industry. And I can tell you it is. It's, it's very complex. And, there's a, and so I went down that rabbit hole and did a lot of research, and I was blown away because I didn't really know I didn't. I, I couldn't really comprehend that every family pays a different price for college. And the way that the analogy that I use is: imagine you and five other families go to Whole Foods, and you put the same the same groceries in your cart, only to go through the checkout line and to, to have the person say, "Well, the price for your groceries is eighty. The price for your groceries is fifty dollars. Yours is twenty five. Everybody's got a different price, but that's how." Uh, the college system works and it's dependent on your SAI or your EFC. SAI is student aid index. Your EFC is your expected family contribution. So that's kind of how I got into the position that I'm at now. And um, it's been an interesting road, but uh, a lot like sports casting, I've kind of found that that second passion in life. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so interesting because it's just like you said, it, it you know, prices vary dependent on on certain factors. And, you know, as I was mentioning to you, you know, earlier, it's it's really hard. You know, people encourage people to better their lives. They encourage people to get a college education and to, you know, excel their their education growth. And, and they were, you know, they promise them, oh, yes, you'll you'll get higher jobs, a better education. But then you you are trying to look for colleges to go to and you you have, you know, you might qualify for certain colleges. Then you look at the price and it's like, wow, I don't know if I could afford this. And then you try to take student loans out. But then, you know, most of my friends and family members that have student loans are still paying their student loans off and they're in their oh, adulthood yeah. because the interest rates are phenomenal. So when it comes to, you know, um, you know, going to college, it's crazy because, you know, one one thing I feel, you know, is, is that, you know, if you go to a college in state, you would get a discount. But then if you go to college out state, 
out of state, you're you're paying twice as much. And that to me, that doesn't seem fair. That I, I don't see the the sense. You know, I see the understanding, the cash flow, the greed, you know, within the colleges and you know, the profit making, but for for students, if we're trying to do the education to help people and help students, you know, that seems a little bit on the unfair and, and greedy side. But you know, this is the way our, our system works right now. But for you, you know, what are some ways parents and students can actually save money, afford good to go to good colleges, and really, you know, make those dreams a reality? Because you want your children to have the best life possible. You want them to achieve their goals. You want them to make their dreams a reality. How do you do it when it comes to college and when you when you see the prices of colleges and so forth? What are some of the things parents can do to start looking into it so they could afford to have a, a good education for their child and also have it where it could be feasible and attainable within their income? All great questions, Stacey. And, and, and with that, you know, the number one thing that I try to tell families, and this is so much easier said than done, but I try to tell them to take emotion out of it. Um, and, and that can come on a number of levels because the first thing that you have to understand is that when you're going through the college process, especially from the application side, whether that's financial applications or that's admission applications, it's, it's typically a nine to 18 month process. So you're going to be patiently uh, and with a lot of anxiety wondering when you're going to hear back from something. When, when is this going to get approved? Are we going to get in here? And and you're gonna, you, you, you know, by by the time, you, you know, the, your freshman year starts, you won't have any fingernails left. So, if you can take emotion out of it, that's the number one thing. Number two, though, is it really starts uh, by the the time that the child is their freshman year, or I would really say their sophomore year, because that is when a family's uh, financial position when they are assessed in terms of when the government and these colleges look to see your overall financial picture. So they take that into consideration really when your student is in their sophomore year of high school. Now, a lot of parents don't know this, but think about it. It's when it comes to, to your taxes, you don't start doing worrying about your taxes for 2024 when you're filing them in 2025. You start, you know, sometimes November, December of 2023, already going, how am I going to make sure that I'm going to get all the maximum tax breaks? So you start that year in advance. Same thing truly applies with, with the college process is that you want to start the process and already be thinking about it a year or two years before they even become a, a senior in high school. So that's another thing that I would recommend is when they're sophomores, because you want to make sure that you're taking the right classes. You know, are they challenging themselves? Uh, there, if you want to get into these tier one schools, and there's a lot here on the East Coast, especially wow. Ivy League schools, uh, you want to make sure that that they are they're they're doing their AP testing, that they're taking the, the right uh, kind of classwork that they need to. Uh, are they taking the SAT or the ACT? A lot of people don't know this now because they look at it and and and, and see that some of these schools are now test optional. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, these tests are being now being implemented and they're going to, I think they're going to come back required in a lot of ways. Uh, but what parents also don't realize that your SAT or ACT score can determine how much financial aid that you get from the school. So all of these things are so important. It's all big part of the, uh, the overall pie when it comes to the college admission process. Uh, but if you are a family and I would say the majority of our families um, have a good nest egg that they have put money aside for college, but they may have to borrow a little bit as well. Um, one thing I think that you need to talk to if you have a financial advisor is ask them if they know in terms of what money is going to, what is an accessible asset, what's a non-accessible asset. And if you don't, if you don't know those two, you better, you, you got to get a good understanding. So that way, you're able to reposition certain assets that don't count against you in this process uh, and then make sure that the money is set aside. One thing that families may think that with 529s, well, you know, we've got 529s, we're good, we're set. Well, it depends, you know, 529s can work in your favor. 529s can certainly be detrimental in your overall score. So there's a lot of little things that come into it, um, but preparation Looking at it two, three years, you know, while your kid's still in high school is, is to me, the number one recommendation I have to any family is don't wait until they're a junior 
certainly don't wait until they're a senior because now you've missed out on a lot of the little things that you can take advantage of that will prepare you and put you in a position to, to maximize the financial aid that you get from schools. You know, I find that so interesting because a lot of, you know, a lot of people, you know, around my community would say, oh, don't worry to your junior year. You know, that's when you start doing everything. No. Yeah. So it's it's really good to know that information because I think a lot of people, you know, when they hear, you know, parents starting in their sophomore year, they're like, wow, that's so early to, be, to, to begin. When That's when they really, it seems like they should start looking and start preparing and start filling out forms and so forth. Well, it's certainly when it comes to the financial side. And then when you want to look at the, the classes uh, and the way that you want to structure their, their academic career, right? I mean, you when you look at a high school student, you, you're, those four years are geared towards putting you in the best position for college. Just like when you start college, you don't want to start off with a and, 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 and with a 2.0 GPA and then have to force yourself to, to, to get uh, straight A's and to, to pull that number up to three, three, zero or three, five. So, yeah. you know, the four years in high school prepare you to get into the school you want to get into for college. Then the four years in college prepare you for the type of job and the opportunities that come once you've completed college. And if you want to go on and, and get a, a master's degree, uh, then that that's all part of it as well. But you have to really think, and this this step goes to, to, to college. College goes to a, a much bigger picture. But what we try to do also with parents is, is, is let them know that you want to, when it comes to the funding, the number one source of funding from colleges and universities is the, is the financial aid that they have, whether it's in terms of endowments, and the money. And so that's why we want a lot of families to look at private schools, because a lot of private schools have bigger endowments than the public schools. Uh, usually smaller enrollment, bigger endowment means a bigger percentage of money that goes into the hands of families, or at least the money that is accessible to the families that they can get their hands on. And then it comes in the form of two ways. It's either need-based aid, that you need the financial uh, backing, or it's a merit-based, you have an outstanding student and they want that student to come to the school because uh, every school wants to get their hands on outstanding students or students who they believe will contribute back to that school once they leave or will contribute back to their endowment. Uh, and so they view your child as an asset. So it, it, it's, it's all part of how the system works. Um, it's a very well-oiled machine when it comes to the admissions and the financial departments. And you want to make sure that you're really ahead of the game. So when those application windows open, whether it's for financial aid, the FAFSA form, college admissions, you want to make sure that you're on top of it uh, and you don't fall behind. Because if you wait to start the process as a junior, you're not going to get those forms in, filled out in time. You're not going to start the process. You won't even know what colleges you want to go to because most of our juniors have already done their college visits by the time their junior year is over. Yeah, you know, that it's it's pretty amazing because it, you know, one of the one of the problems that I see too is that the parents don't know exactly what to do either. Like the parents don't really know what's out there, you know, they know the basics, but they don't really know how they could save their money. You know, a lot of parents say, go look for scholarships, you know, go, you know, see what you could do to save us money. But when it comes to what the state offers or what what the what the federal, you know, system offers. You know, I think a lot of parents are kind of clueless, you know, they just know the basics, you know, and a lot of times they know what the basics is because the schools are sending home pamphlets, the schools are sending home little brochures, you know, for the students to give their parents when they're in high school, you know, come to this event and you'll learn about this, come to this event. And a lot of times the parents don't come and they don't learn and they don't understand. So, you know, they're kind of in, in the, in the, well, off. yeah. So those, if you talk about some of these college or career fairs that 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 you they that are held on campus, they're essentially and it's an advertisement and it's and and it's a way to get your child excited to go to that school. You start talking and and really that's what they're doing. It's like they're building up their product. It's it's and like the comparison and the analogy that I like to use when it comes to actually finding a college and paying for it, it's like buying a car. You know, the advertised price or the cost of attendance isn't typically what you pay. But yeah. what these schools do is they get they get kids so interested and so excited. And, and, and 
what parents do is, and this is why I say you got to take emotion out of it, is they don't want to disappoint their child. Nobody wants to disappoint their child and say, you know, Johnny, I can't, I can't send you to uh, Syracuse or whatever the case is just too expensive. They don't want to say that, you know, if, 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 if their young child's like, oh my God, I, I, I want to go to the University of Pennsylvania or Colgate or whatever, whatever the case may be, um, those parents typically are going to find a way to do it, even if they don't know how or where the money's coming from. So right. that's why you got to be careful. And that's why you really have to sit down and work with a planner. I would, I mean, if you, if, if you think that your taxes are important to address through a tax consultant or, a, or a CPA, don't you think that the college process also deserves that type of attention? Uh, work with somebody who's been in this field 10, 15, 20 years, and they know the processes, they know how the law system has changed over the last uh, 10, 15 years uh, and what rules have been put in, what legislation has been put into place uh, so that they can stay ahead of the game. Uh, they can tell you what courses it takes. I mean, there's so many different levels and that's what we try to do is we try to identify what a family's pain points are. What is it that, that, that really, that keeps them up at night, right? I, you've got kids. Um, and so I'm sure when you were going through this process, you're like, this is what keeps, this is what stresses me out. This is what keeps me up at night. I, you know, and, 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 and it, it, it will drive parents and I, and I'm sure everybody knows the story, but it'll drive parents to do things that they probably wouldn't have dreamt of doing. You know, when you think about uh, the college uh, scam where, where the, the parents of the actors, right. They, yeah. they went that route that sort of bribed their way in, but that's, that's, that's the emotion part of this. And, um, that's why I always recommend we, we do free one hour consultations. So you have a better understanding of what's the problems that need to be addressed and can we address it? So when you sit down with a, with a planner, like what are some of the things they're going to go over with and, and what are some of the things they can do? Cause a lot of times the kids will be talking to their social workers and their, and their college planners in school, but the parents are clueless. But when you go to a college planner, what, what are they going to benefit that they won't benefit anywhere else? Well, first off, you, we, we break down the college experience. There's there in three different sides. There's the academic, there's the social, there's the financial. So if you have a college counselor or a counselor that you work with at school, number one, those counselors typically only work with the, the, the students who have a high desire, a high drive, very high ambition that want to meet with them, say, you know, I want to go to this school, help me, help me, help me. Those are the ones. But if you have a passive student who has, you know, it's like, yeah, college, this, that, the, those two sides rarely come together. So yeah. that we, we understand. All right. Um, and that's where it's, it's best to have somebody to kind of come in there and force the issue uh, with some of these parents and some of these students because they, they do take a passive approach. Mm -hmm. One, you have to know that, that, that a lot of these high school counselors only see that next step from a educational side. Here's the, here's the grades you need to have. Here's the classes you need to take. Uh, here's your SAT score that you have. That is the, the, the window in which they see the, the college experience, but you really need to break it down in those three sectors I talked about, academic, social, and financial, because let's say you have great grades and you've done everything in high school, perfect, 4.0 student, everything's great. And then you go to a school where you don't feel like you fit in. And, and now all of a sudden you hate it there and you don't like your teachers. You can't meet friends and you feel out of place. And uh, you know, you're maybe you're from the, the Northeast and you go down to a school in Florida and you don't feel like that you're gelling and maybe it's too. All of those little things have to be taken into consideration. Maybe you, you chose the wrong major. Now you hate this major. and You hate taking the courses. Those are all little things that no matter how great you did at high school, you didn't pick the right college because you picked it for the wrong reasons. And so that's the social side. That's the big part where you have to determine are they making the right choice when it comes to picking the college? Uh, yeah. Because so many times, because really, and really, what does it come down to? If you don't, if what's, what's, what's the penalty when you don't pick the right college, it's more money, right? A lot of the, yeah. your, 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 your uh, tuition credits won't transfer to a new school. You're now mm -hmm. looking at five or six years as opposed to four years. So if you don't do it right the first time, now you're looking at even more money. So that's why it's important that 
you do it right the first time. You go through the questionnaire. You do through, you do the personality test to ensure that you're that all the choices that you're making initially, you're doing it well focused, well researched, and then the financial aspect is the most important, really, uh, because every family wants to save money. Every family wants to get their kid into the school and out of the school as cheap as they can possibly do it. And so we 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 show them the way. We tell them you know how how that's done. Uh, and, and walk them through the process, where the money comes from. Don't necessarily spend your time looking for private scholarships because that's typically less than 5% of the money that's out there. So there's a lot of little ways that where we walk them through the process to understand if, if, you, we, if we, we get the educational part, the social, the financial, I get, almost can guarantee you the four-year college experience is going to be one that uh, is going to work out great for everybody. That sounds amazing, you know, and, and that's really important, too, because I think one of the biggest problems we have is that when I grew up, our parents didn't help us. It's basically you figured everything out on your own. And then you have a lot of parents that, you know, because they have that mentality, you know, they you know, that's what they know. You know, it rolls over to their generation. So, you know, yeah. a lot of parents don't, you know, understand a lot, especially if they didn't go to college. It's hard for them to understand all the little components that go with it because they didn't ha have that chance to experience that college, you know, experience. And, you know, even with the, with the with the parents that did go to college, like we were talking about earlier, there are a lot of new things that are now popping out that we didn't have back then, you know, new laws, new regulations, new, new, you know, new acts, new bills that were signed that, you know, allow yep. financial, you know, aid to certain things that they didn't have before, you know, so if you really, if you're going to keep up with all these things, you probably should have a, a really close and steady relationship with your, your college planner, you know, to understand all these things, or is there anything parents can do at home? Or is it really just that communication with a finance, with a, with a college planner that's really going to set you on your way? Well, they, they can go about and do it on their own. The colleges will love them for doing it if that, that's the way that they want to do it. They'll, they'll typically, I would say that over 80% of families, probably around 90% who do it on their own, typically overpay more than yeah. they have to do. So one of the things that we really do, and this is really big when you get down to their senior year and they start to apply for schools, we want them typically to apply to six to eight schools that they would feel comfortable going to or attending. You can have a favorite. It's always good to have a favorite. You just don't want the colleges to know that you have a favorite school, right? So right. Uh, so six to eight schools. And then you start to get those award letters back uh, and the award letters. And, and in those award letters, it explains in details. It shows you, okay, here's the scholarship money. Well, how do you know if you're getting a good deal from that school, that college, that university? How do I know if, 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 my, if, if Mary, my daughter, um, you know, they, they say I have to pay $40,000 to go to UCLA. Right. Um, how do I know that $40,000 and Mary's got a 4.0 in high school. How do I know that that $40,000 that I, I now have to pay is a good deal to go to UCLA or, or any state college or whatever the case, it could be any school. How do I know it's a good deal? Well, we've been working and, and with enough families to know, given your kid's academic pedigree and your family's financial situation, right down to a few thousand dollars how much you should be expected to pay to go to that particular school. So that just comes with uh, working with thousands of families and working with hundreds of schools to know exactly what that monetary amount should be. Because in the end, you don't know if, if, if you're getting dollar for dollar as good of a deal that you could get from those colleges. When you and I, well, you know, I can't speak for you, but when I was in college, I didn't even know you could appeal those award letters. And simply an appeal, is a request for more money. I mean, I thought, you know, I went to, I graduated from Texas Tech. If they gave me $3,000 or $4,000, I'm like, thank you. And went, went about my way. If they gave me $6,000, I had a bigger smile on my face. Well, you can now go back and appeal those. And that's what we do. We help families look at those award letters, evaluate those award letters, determine, are they getting a dollar for dollar, the best deal that they can possibly get? And if they're not, then we help them go back and appeal that and oftentimes that can result in 3,000, 5,000, 5,000 additional money per year. As long as the student keeps up their good grades through college, $5,000 per year. So, you know, at the end of four years, that just that alone, we can help families. It depends, you know, if they're not 
but you know you can help them save anywhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars just in the appeal process. Wow, you know, I I didn't even know that. I I think that's excellent, you know, information. And this is what I'm talking about because so many families don't know that they could do this. And this is kind of mm -hmm. like when you talked about like buying a car. You can, you know, there's the sticker price, but there also is, you know, room for negotiation. And I think a lot of times when you look at colleges, you have a price that's given to you, and, and you think that's it. You know, that that's what I have to pay, and you know, there's no argument about it. Now I have to figure out where do I get the money from. Well, when, and, and to kind of piggyback off that car analogy, would you ever walk onto a sales lot and, and, and let's say, let's say it's a Toyota and say, I, oh my God, you know, tell the salesperson, oh my God, I love that red Toyota sports car over there. I've been wanting it for a year now. It's like, and, and they can say, well, that's the only one we have. Is, do you ever expect that the salesperson is going to give you a deal if they know that's the car you want? They know you're going to walk off the, the car lot today. Uh, with that particular car? Of course not. There's no incentive. You have just, you've played your hand. Same right. thing applies to college. Like I said, you can have a favorite. Don't let the colleges know. Don't play your hand um, because the colleges will see when you fill out all the, the necessary paperwork and the information um, in your common application, they'll see that there's other schools that are also buying for your services and your money. Uh, and so they will make they if they value your your child, and they see that there is certainly value in what they're going to bring to the to the college and to the university, uh, they'll make a strong pitch, and they will reduce the amount whether that's through a need based aid or merit based aid. So that's why you don't want to play your hand to the college. Don't let them know what you're thinking. Don't tell them how great Johnny thought the campus was or how wonderful the campus visit was. Keep it all to yourself and 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 play it close to the vest. And then in the end, you will reward from all of that. Because like I said, the, if the colleges will squeeze every last penny they can out of you, that is their job. It is the most important department within any university system is that admissions process. And they work hand in hand with the financial aid department to make sure that they're going to maximize the money they get from one school year to the next. And, you know, one of the things, too, is that so you start you start filling out the forms for financial help in the beginning in your sophomore year. Now, when it comes to looking at colleges, you know, you take time to look for colleges. What would be the appropriate time to start really applying for these colleges? If you're, you know, if you, you, you're looking for the financial aid, you want you're going to pick those six to eight colleges that you really like, you know, from your experience, when do people have the most success? How early do they have to start applying in advance to really? have everything work in sync so everything kind of flows well let me let me kind of go back and 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 and, and uh, work with this the, the the timeline a little bit so yes. i would say when when your child's a sophomore kind of come up with a list and start to do some personality and assessment tests to see because you have you've had teenagers their mm. their minds and their opinions and what they like changes like the wind one direction they're over here Next minute, they're way over here and then this, that, and the other. So the very few of them really are on track to say, this is what I want to do. So start with some of those personality and those assessment tests. We do those with all of our kids that we work with to determine not really what they want to do, but you can definitely rule out what they don't want to do. So that can kind of start when they're sophomore. When I, you don't want to start the financial aid forms and all that, but from a family standpoint, away from the child, you can look at your overall financial picture and determine where your assets are. Are they in the right place? And if they're not, what, where can I sort of move them around that will give me, that put me in the best position to receive the amount of financial aid? So once you have that college list and you've thrown around a few colleges, when you get to the summer of your junior year, then you can kind of start to formulate a plan of what colleges that you want to go visit. And you never want to go, even though the majority of people take their college visits during the summer, you don't want to go in the summer. So if there's one piece of advice that you can take from this, don't make your college visits during the summer. It's never an accurate representation of college life. Uh, the people within the admissions department and, and the administration aren't there during the summer. So you're not going to be able to talk to the people that you need to talk to. Um, so don't ever, don't ever set up your campus visits during those summer months. Now, I always say summer's a good time to, to add some of those extracurricular activities, do a lot of volunteer work during the summer. If you have a summer job, you wanna make a little bit of money, summer's a good time to do all of that. Um, 
but then start to make those campus visits in the junior. And then by the time you're, you're, you're at the end of your junior year, you have a pretty good indication of what colleges you want to look for, you want to look at, and you want to apply to. And, and then, then when you're a senior, you start applying to those schools, make sure your FAFSA form, your common application, that's something you want to work out in this. You want to work on during the summer, your essays, you want to work it during on during the summer of your, uh, after your junior year, heading into your senior year. So it's all those little things is, is kind of, by the time you get to your senior year, you've pretty much done all of the work and all the prep work that needs to be done. And then when you get into that last semester, the spring year, and that's when you just start to receive uh, those award letters back. At that point, it's a waiting game. And that's when I say, that's when the anxiety builds because they've done all this legwork and now they're kind of waiting to hear what the results are from the school. and. I can tell you anytime you talk, you're working hand in hand with government and, and they're working with schools, things have gotten so delayed, especially over the last two years with these FAFSA forms, it's just become a real dumpster fire. And so um, you got to exercise a lot of patience when you're a senior, because it doesn't always happen when you, when you want it to happen. Right. Exactly. That, you know, that, that's great advice because, it, you know, you really broke it down to help, you know, people really understand the, the step-by-step -step process. So they understand, okay, this is what I have to do at this point. This is what the next thing I have to focus on and the next thing and the next thing. So everything runs smoothly. Now, if we had to take everything we talked about in this discussion, what are some of the things you really like to emphasize to, you know, make the listeners, the parents, the students listening understand some really important factors that we discussed today that you think should be emphasized on? Well, I mean, for the majority of families that we talk to, the financial side's really the number one. That's, that's really the derivative of where their pain really starts is how am I going to pay for this? Mm -hmm. So if I had to suggest anything is, is don't ever rule out a particular school because you did a Google search and realized that uh, Princeton, Columbia, University of North Carolina, I don't care what it is, is falls within a certain price range. Go right. through the process is what I'm saying. Go through the process and see what the school will initially offer. Um, you know, like I said, you're, you're, if you're just going to go through, you know, a, a Google search, because all schools have to disclose their cost of admission and the cost of admissions, everything it's books, it's tuition, room and board, transportation, all the, it's the whole nine yards of what, it, what the true college cost would be, but go through the process and don't let, so don't 80% of families rule out colleges based on what, based on their internet search. So that's the first thing I would, I would say is don't rule it out, go through the process and consider schools that you'd never, that you wouldn't have considered. And that, in a lot of cases, that's private schools, because I, I would say, a majority of families probably come to come to us thinking that public school is going to be their only option, only to realize once they go through the process that they wound up going to a, a, a public school. We probably flip 50 to 70 percent of those families now that their their eyes are open. They see how the how the system works. They see once they go through the process and where those numbers and, and how how they're slotted, because if, if some schools meet 90 to 100 percent of need, um, of your financial need, they'll, they'll meet that much. It really drives the cost down significantly because as you talked about, when we talked about since 2000, only medical costs have risen at a greater rate than college, the price of college. So how you can get out in front of that, how you can take advantage of that money, what you can do to drive your number. Uh, the second part of that is every family should know what their SAI number is their student aid index number. It's a, it's a number between minus 1,500 and 999,000, something like that line. But that line will determine how much need-based aid you're eligible for from the colleges and the institution. So it's a number that you should know, like your social security number once your kid um, is in high school. I think that's excellent advice. Now for you, like what type of services do you provide? Can you explain that to the listeners? Uh, everything, everything from a database of the schools so that, you know, you have the same access to what the, the, the data that we consider ourselves experts and you have that sort, you can go through and do a database search of schools and, and find out all this information. You can plug in your SAI number and it'll break it down to say, okay, this is what you could be expected to pay for if your child attends this college. 
We have SAT, ACT test prep to help them with, with that. We have um, nationally accredited college uh, admission counselors that you, that you can speak to one-on-one -on -one to help you through the process. If you, you know, the big thing is essays, you know? And, 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 and one thing to remember is, and this is where I think a lot of families take it personally, kids aren't rejected from colleges. Applications are rejected, not your child. It's the application. So if you don't do the app, the application, and sometimes those, just those essays alone will get your kid into school. Sometimes those essays will help your kid get an additional $10,000 in school aid. So that's a big part of it. You know, essays are a big part of it. The testing is now a big part. Your activities. I mean, it, it really is. It, it, it's, 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 like, it's like a pie and cut up that pie into eight pieces. You want to make sure that each of those eight pieces um, fit together to give your child the best opportunity. So we help in all of those areas, whether it's, it's essays or SAT, um, it, making sure the, the FAFSA forms, you, you mess up a FAFSA form and now it delays your application four to six weeks. You don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that it's filed accurately and mm -hmm. within the first seven days that that window is open to take advantage. Because once that money's allotted, once that money goes out to families, um, and it's not there anymore. If you're late to the game, you know, you're, 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 you're just SOL at that point. Right. Right. Oh, that's so true. Now, where can people find you? So you can go to my personal website, uh, smartcollegeadvisor.com. I would go in there, fill in your information, and then we will uh, put you on a schedule. Cause what we do is we offer a free one hour consultation. And in that consultation, it's mostly one hour of us just consuming information, getting, asking you questions, because I can give you all this information, but until I actually get your personal information and ask you a number of questions and, and figure out what your family situation is, there's really nothing I can do to, to, to figure out how we can help you directly. So you can go to smartcollegeadvisor.com. Um, I'm part of Elite Collegiate Planning and the Paradigm Financial Group. And you can uh, do a Google search, go, go there. Um, there's a, a lot of information resources, but try to get that free one hour consultation. As I said, it's free. Um, you know, I can, I can always send you any type of information. I like being an advocate to parents because a lot of parents just don't know. And I like just offering up, um, you know, free advice and, and whatever I can do to kind of help them along in the process. But getting a free one hour consultation is kind of the way that, I would uh, try to, I would advise some of your, your listeners out there to, 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 to take advantage of that so that they, they know exactly, is this something for me or is this something that, um, you know, maybe I think I can navigate on my own. Right. I think that's great. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, what you do is amazing. I think it's really helpful. I think all parents could use a little help and guidance along the way, especially during such a stressful time, because there are a lot of things to consider and to take into consideration when you're helping your child find a college. And especially if you're not fully aware of everything that's going on, because there's been many times where a friend of mine will, oh, did you hear about that new thing that just came out from the government? They're offering X, Y, and Z. I'm like, oh, no, I right. didn't hear it. You know, so, you know, knowing, having people on your side that are professionals that are on top of these things, it's like going to a doctor when you want to have to, you need to go to a specialist and you have to you know, learn about your heart. You know, you're going to go to a heart specialist and they're going to know all of the up-to-date things that are going on. And same thing goes with a college planner. You you need to go with someone that is on top of these things, that knows exactly what's going on, that can give you prime time information that will help you on your way to success, you know, so the parents can, you know, be successful, you know, financially. Naturally, and the child could have its best opportunity to get the best education possible where they want to go and hopefully their favorite college if possible. So, you know, this has been amazing. I really thank you, John, for coming on yeah. the show. This has been an, a, a really, um, really helpful um, podcast. I think you've really provided a lot of useful um, information and step-by-step -step instructions to help people out there, you know, because this is a time that everybody, you know, has children or, you know, even people who, you know, take care of children, you know, this is information that they could always use to help to further their child's um, life. And in also, you know, if you're educated on it, you could also pass the information along, you know, it, it, Sure. The more, 
more, you know, you're able to understand, the more you're able to help others. And, you know, so what you're doing is great. I really, you know, commend you on what you do. This has been well, a thank you. Yeah. podcast. And I thank you very much for, you know, sharing this time and all this information with us. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. Thanks for having us on. And and really more than anything, we we want the college experience to be one that it, I can't tell you how many families are like, oh my God, I'm so glad that that's over with. We we want to take the pain and the anxiety and the frustration out of it and, and make this go as smooth as possible. And look, families want to spend time with each other, right? You don't want to spend your time mulling over application after application um, and, and, and let this consume your life. I think you want to enjoy the last few years with your child as you can before they go off and then they start their family and you don't see them. Um, and so we find somebody, if it's not us, find somebody who's professional in this, in this realm um, so that you can really enjoy those final years. And, and this doesn't overwhelm you like it, it, like I've seen it done with so many families. Oh yeah. A hundred percent, you know, and it definitely can overwhelm you in more ways than mm -hmm. one. So yeah. If you, if you can have a planner that helps you with this and takes that burden off of you where you could actually spend more time with your, your family and, and everything, you know, goes, you know, according to the way it's supposed to go. It's, it's a no way win situation, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's definitely a win-win. There's no question about it. You, you, you'll be saving money at the same time and your, your, your kid will be on track. Um, to, to go to a school and to maximize their learning experience. Yes, 100%, 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. This has been amazing. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Okay, you too.